Happy holidays, everyone, and welcome to our CKPG News special, A Chat with the Mayor. It's an annual event for us here at CKPG, and we certainly look forward to it every year now. Sherry Green joins us now. Welcome, Sherry Green, and uh, happy holidays to you as well. Thanks so much for having me, Dave, and happy holidays to you. Well, let's get right at it and uh, first of all talk about uh, the recent uh, McLean's ranking. Once again, Prince George is listed as the most dangerous city in Canada. Uh, there's lots of interesting topics, I, I suppose, around this, especially the fact when you consider we didn't have a homicide in 2010, but still earned that top ranking, which is, uh, I know, pretty disappointing for you, isn't it? Well, it is, and I think it is for the whole community because we know the reality about Prince George, and we are not the most dangerous city. And I, and I don't think that's a fair label to attach to any city across the country. Crime stats are the lowest they've been in uh, almost 40 years. And what we're really focused on is that we did have improvement in, in the rankings that we had from Statistics Canada. They came out in the summer and for the 2010 year where we had a significant number of homicides and something very serious and unfortunate for this community, we were ranked 11th in terms of the severity of a range of crimes that Statistics Canada analyzes, aggravated assault, break and enter, things like that, sexual assault. And for the 2011 year, we did not have a homicide committed in this municipality in 2011. So we were quite confident we would see dramatic movement uh, on the list in a downward trend away from that number one ranking. And in fact, we were right. We ranked 14th by Statistics Canada for our results for 2011. So that's the reality. We're 14th. We're not first. Uh, McLean's adds a filter to the statistics and they choose to remove a lot of the smaller communities. The stats are done on a per capita basis but they've, they've taken a low range of smaller communities away from the list and look at the top 100 and that puts us in first place again. And I guess what's really frustrating is that we moved uh, away from some high crime stats, we've moved in a better position, but so has everybody else. So we've all improved in one way or another. And when you look at, when you look at the magazine, the top 10 cities that they list, for 2011 are the same top 10 for 2010. We've moved around a bit in terms of who's sitting where, but it's that same group of cities, so it's very frustrating for all of us. At the same time, though, you, you have to agree that there is room for improvement even still. Well, and continuous improvement, and who isn't striving to do better uh, in providing public safety for their community. Everybody wants to feel safe and live in a, in a safe, healthy community. So I would say that you know we, we've never stopped working on making it better. We've got some terrific programs that the RCMP are very focused on and the most significant is the Prolific Offender Program where they really target that small group of you know 20 or 30 uh, people who are creating the majority of the crime across the community and they know who they are, they target them and they're very effective at it. They get them in jail, they get conviction rates and that's what adds to the statistics because we're successful in, in our prosecution and what we're trying to do to get these people off of the street. For a, a Prince George resident, uh, certainly the, um, the title is almost embarrassing, I think, at times, uh, because it, it doesn't feel like it fits. But at the same time, uh, trying to bring someone in, a professional uh, in from another province, perhaps, to a job in Prince George, isn't that where the real challenge lies? Well, it, you know, I don't think I would use the word embarrassing because I, we know it's not the reality, but the fact is it's damaging to our ability to recruit people to this community, to attract business and investment to this community. We're judged by how people Google search us and when you, when you look up Prince George and the top hits that you get are negative stories about our crime or, or about the smell or about whatever it is that we allow to be told about us, then no question, people think, well, why would I want to be there? So how do we change that? Well, we need to change that ourselves. Uh, we need to check our own language and our own conversations that we have when we talk about this community. If you love living here, you need to let people know that. And you need to be cognizant of how you express yourself on Facebook and Twitter and any other means of social media that gets out on the internet. So if you live here and you're not enjoying it and you're not a happy camper being in this community and you're telling all your friends how much you think it sucks to be here and frankly that's how people sp speak about it that aren't impressed, uh, you're doing some harm to your neighbours and you're costing this community uh, literally dollars because we are trying to bring investment, we're trying to bring new people to this community, grow this economy, grow the tax base so that we can afford all the things that everybody who does like being here and does love living in Prince George wants to have services for. So it's, uh, it's an extra challenge, it's another layer of complexity for us to battle uh, what we know just is a false 
state of affairs for us. But it's something a citizen can do. They yep. can take this, this issue on themselves. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, and, and every individual owns a piece of this responsibility. It's not for someone else to fix for us. We need to do it ourselves. And we rely on the media. We rely on our partners. So letters to the editor. Uh, you know, tell us something good about why you like living here instead of complaining about you know, the snow removal being uh, too, too thick or you know, your driveway wasn't perfect, whatever the case may be. We need to talk about the good things that we love about this place because there's a lot of people who came here for a year and have never left and they're longtime residents. And they'll tell you in the coffee shop, you can have a conversation about why you love it, but you need to tell the world that story or we're going to continue to be uh, seen and judged in a negative light by others. Well, that's certainly a story that uh, happened with me <laughs> way back in 1989. <laughs> yeah. so. And you're still uh, here. Yeah, that's right. And, and I hope to be here for a while too. <laughs> Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about the core review.